the book of Acts, chapter 26, from verse 16, the Bible says, Get up now and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to what you have seen of me and what you will be shown. I shall deliver you from these people and from the Gentiles to whom I send you, to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may obtain forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been consecrated by faith in me. Praise God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you, we enthrone you, we glorify your holy name, Lord, we welcome your presence in our hearts, in our midst, we pray that you may speak to us, speak to our hearts, Lord, teach us something new that is going to help us to grow more in the knowledge of you and in wisdom. Help us to have our mind focused on you, our eyes fixed on you this day for our own good and for the greater glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. <coughs> so we are reading two scriptures. And um, one of them is in the book of Acts. And this is um, the part of the scripture where uh, Paul was being commissioned. Saul. Saul was being commissioned by the Lord. And today the Lord is speaking to you and I with the same commissioning. And the topic for this meditation is Be My Witness. The topic is be my witness. Now, this whole conversation between the Lord and Saul was exactly what was happening. He was, in other words, commanding him. You see, when the Lord speaks, it's not um, just a word. He is the living word. And his word is settled in heaven. His word is alive. He is the word that was in the beginning, who became flesh to dwell in us. So this is the power of the word of God, that when we read the living word of God, this is how we get to experience the transformation of the word in our lives. So this word the Lord is speaking to us today, he is asking you and I, and as he is asking, it is a command. Be my witness. Be my witness. Be my witness. We know the life of Saul. We know uh, how the Saul was not really serving God. He was persecuting the church and the servants of God before he met Jesus. <clears throat> and the Bible records in verse 12 that on one such occasion as he was traveling to Damascus um, at midday on the way. This is when he met with the light from the sky, brighter than the sun shining around him and his companions. And they all fell to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And um, as miraculous as this encounter was, I believe um, we are all in different capacities have come into an encounter with Jesus. It could be through the word, it could be through the prayer, it could be today. But um, the most important thing is Jesus died and rose again. Other than Jesus coming to reconcile his own creation to God, the reason why he came to earth was to establish the kingdom of God, of Abba. So Jesus chose to do the will of Abba Father. 
you know, irrespective of how hard he knew it was going to be. So he took on the road to Calvary, dying on the cross. That separation was the painful moment uh, that he had to experience, that he had to completely be separated <clears throat> from Abba, Father. Because he says, I and the Father are one. And we know God cannot die. So, but Jesus, man, Jesus, man had to die. And uh, he had to resurrect. And that is why now there was that moment. So, if Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God, and after resurrection, he gave a mandate that go and tell the whole world of this good news, it means that it hasn't stopped. It hasn't, that command is still in operation. It hasn't stopped. He did his part and he has left us to do our part because this world could have been like God would have just been there without uh, without us, without human beings, without the creation. I mean, he is complete. And this is why we are only complete in him because the only way we exist and live and are able to live our lives to the full to our complete purpose is when we are united with the Lord. So we are only complete when we are in him. So that means that we belong to him. That means that when the Lord gave us a mandate to continue what he began, then to us is a command. And it is so much of a command that um, we cannot just rise up and decide it is uh, that command is not in operation anymore but as it is we have been given the will so each day we rise up we choose we choose you see life life is like we are standing on a crossroad every day every moment through every circumstance through every experience that finds us we are in like on a crossroad and while we, we find ourselves in a crossroad, we make a choice which path we want to choose, which path we want to follow. We make a choice. So this whole business of the will and choice is the fact that we already have seen Jesus. We have seen what he has done. We have known. We have probably experienced to a great extent, whatever extent. Then each day we have to choose to do his will. We have to choose him, you see. To choose Jesus is not always easy. But to choose him, we choose him from a perspective of the fact that we belong to him. We are his. If we belong to him, then it means we cannot be complete. Our day cannot be complete. Our peace cannot be complete. Our joy cannot be complete. Our love cannot be complete. Anything that we are, anything that we are meant to be is incomplete if we are not united with him. We cannot be called Christians one day and the next minute we decide, oh, we have to remove this title. But the fact that we have been called and accepted to be called with Christ, united with Christ, then it means it is a mandate that has already been placed upon our lives to do what he, he started, like to live the life that he already has shown us how to live now. The beauty of this thing is this message was given to Paul whatever two over 2000 years ago but today it comes alive why because Jesus is alive like the word the living word of God is alive and active he is the word he is alive he died and rose again he resurrected so we can live with power how do we access this power it is when we accept his word his direction as a command and and we choose to follow this word. We choose to live in accordance with his command and the mandate he has placed upon our lives. And then we pray in unity with this word that he has spoken to us, that he may open our eyes to see so that we can move and walk and do what he has purposed us to do. So he said uh, to Saul, get up now. Stand on your feet. And then the next word is, I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and a witness of what you have seen of me and what you will be shown. Do you know 
it is interesting that and then he goes on to give the promises of what he was gonna do how interesting do you see this experience that paul had with the lord at this moment when the lord is saying get up and from the other stories that we have read uh, um, when jesus was walking the earth like um, when he was talking to bartimaeus the blind man and um, the, the woman with the withered hand when he was talking to um, lazarus like every word every moment that the lord spoke he said get up he said take your mat and go lazarus uh, come out um Zacchaeus come down you know every moment that the lord spoke that word did not just um it wasn't just a word it came with power it came with so much power because god was speaking <laughs> today he is speaking and i believe with all my heart that this is not just any other word that this word as it was at the moment when Saul was already shattered and broken and scared and whatever it is that was going on because it was a moment of his turnaround it was a moment that the Lord had to intervene so he can live to fulfill the to establish the kingdom of God not the reverse everybody will have this moment in their life it can come in different ways and different times perspective we all don't have to fall on the road and see the light but we all have different moments that the lord will give us an opportunity to experience him to encounter him and if we haven't then we have to pray to get this moment because this is where everything begins really and this word that the lord speaks uh, even when he met a man who was at the pool for 38 years who did not even seem to recognize him as Jesus the Lord the king you know the healer um even at that moment the word that he spoke already by the time the man had he just had to react this is how we know that we are not our own that we are created for him and him alone that irrespective of the facts and of what the world tells us or many voices in the recent times that are speaking and bringing confusion in the hearts of many many young and <laughs> god created individuals people the word of god still remains as alive and active so whenever jesus spoke the obedience the obedience of the word the obedience of the person that he spoke to already reveals to us that his word is not just a word it comes with might it comes with power is coming from the lord of lords the word comes revealing to us where it is actually coming from so the lord is saying get up now stand on your feet so whatever it is that has been a hindrance for you and I to rise up to get up to stand firm to be firm in our belief to be firm in what we have seen we have experienced we have read about the lord what we have believed because john 3:16 remains to be the foundation of the lord's coming he says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish you see <clears throat> so if this is the foundation that it has to be built in us in the church in the church of jesus christ and we know that his coming is already uh, in that just that one verse we can already see what exactly was going to happen what happened and why it happened for love then he had to come and give himself up so we can be saved not to be condemned so this um turn around this transformation this complete change that he already um had planned to bring into the world was in continuation with his predestined purpose for his creation and this is how he, he we need to be reminded you know or remind ourselves how important that you and I are to him so when he says you are precious to me precious in my eyes i have loved you with an everlasting love it is because 
you know, one word will be connected to the other word and to remind us that then Jesus chose to come and die for us. So, when you have this word engraved in our hearts, so then when we hear the Lord say, get up now and stand on your feet, he said to Paul, I have appeared to you. I don't know who uh, among you listening to me (laughs) would... um, would agree with me that in different capacities, different answered prayer moments, different situations that we have experienced the Lord's intervention in our lives. We may not have seen him as Paul did, but definitely we have experienced him at different capacities. And so the command is still viable. And as he said, he said to Paul, I have appointed you. So it means, <laughs> oh my goodness. So when the Lord speaks, that this word comes with power. What about when he, when he decides, you know, when he decides to answer that prayer intention in our heart, that prayer intention in our lives, that when he decides to answer that prayer, that that desire, when he shows up in a mighty way and gives us the grace to experience his presence, the Holy Spirit, when he brings consolation in the midst of struggles, when he brings that, that, that awesome news of a miraculous healing in the midst of negative doctor's report, when the Lord shows up with that miraculous intervention that we cannot even put a finger on, but we know that we know that we know it is the Lord. What happens? We can't keep it. So it is already an appointment. (laughs) So that moment when the Lord does that very thing, it is already a moment of an encounter. It is a moment of an encounter. So he has chosen He has chosen to allow you and I at different capacities to be able to experience his goodness in our lives, his his might, his miraculous intervention in different ways. So that means that moment that we get to experience that is already an appointment to be what? His witness. So the call today, the topic today is be my witness. Be my so the Lord is telling you and I to be his witness because there is something that we have experienced that somebody else would want to know so that their faith can be alive, can rise up, so they can trust God, so they can get to experience also the goodness of God. You see, the desire that the Lord had even before he came is to um, allow us to experience his love and to know that he cares to redeem us just like the liberation story in the old testament when he sent moses to liberate his children because the bible records that you see the israelites were going through so much oppression and when god was calling moses he said i have seen so the coming of jesus is a revelation his intervention in our lives at different capacities in uh, is a revelation to remind us to reveal to us that he is a god who still sees us a roy who still understands what we are going through, who is ready to come to our intervention, who is ready to come and change our situation. It is a moment that he comes to help us to have our faith become alive. Because when we lose faith, then we are losing faith on the only one, one person who can help us, Jesus has always been our help so he desires that we hold on to hope and when we hold on to hope when our faith rises we only need faith as small as a master see jesus said and we can say to any mountain to move now he goes on to tell paul i shall deliver you from these people the promises and to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, so that they may obtain forgiveness of sins, inheritance among those who have been consecrated by faith in me. Praise God. Do you know, when we lose faith in God, when we have lost faith in God, it means that we don't just lose hope of maybe prayer, but we also lose, we are also bound to lose faith of what he did on Calvary Tree. 
So this issue of faith, it is crucial. It is really crucial because faith is what is going to help us to be able to experience everything that Jesus brought, that Jesus came to bring, that he came to establish. He came to establish the kingdom of God. What is this kingdom of God? The kingdom of God uh, is, is headed by a king. The king is Jesus. And this kingdom of God, as long as it is headed by the king and the king is Jesus, there are basic principles that are found to be ruling and reigning and present in this kingdom forgiveness of sins so jesus died on the cross grace is sufficient grace sufficient grace available jesus said my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in weakness so the moments that we have struggled because we have found ourselves in different kind of weaknesses that have led us maybe into sin or the moments that we have felt weak to be able to achieve or to do some things we have failed to recognize that it is when we are weak that the Lord wants to show his power. So he requires us to elevate our minds to where he is and to be able to acknowledge his word, to believe in his word, that the first thing that he did was the most important thing that we have to embrace, that he died so we can live he died so we can live so if jesus died so through the forgiveness of sins which you receive in faith then we are made alive because then the enemy will not live and uh, will not condemn us will not live a life of condemnation that causes us to bow down that causes us to look down that causes us to continue Uh, in that sinful whatever life, not having a direction, not being able to focus on Jesus. But when his life shows up, when faith arises in us, we are able to receive that forgiveness. When we receive the forgiveness that Jesus dies to give us, then what the word of God tells us is that he makes us a new he makes us a new creation because he comes again and dwells in us helps us to live this life with him so in unity you see when we experience forgiveness it is a freedom a freedom of mind a freedom of soul a freedom of heart no more condemnation no more guilt but then we can get to experience the fullness of the love of abba father the fullness of the love of Abba Father, the presence of the Holy Spirit to help us in our every endeavor. So when when, when we come back to, to know that what exactly, what else is in this kingdom, sufficient grace, complete joy. You see, he's the Prince of Peace. We know, we get to experience everything that Jesus is. And it is when, it is when we know that we belong to him When we experience all this, then we know we belong to him. When we know that we belong to him, so we can now come back to live a life knowing that we belong to Jesus. So every day of our lives, no matter what comes our way, no matter what faces us, then we hold on to the fact that he has already revealed to us who we belong to. So we know that nothing has power over us. It doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what we face or what will come against us. It doesn't matter about what matters is what he says about us that gets to be established. But we have to find it, to embrace it, to believe it and to live it. It all starts at the cross. Now, he says, um, Open the eyes that they may turn from darkness to light. The word of God, the word of God is what opens our eyes because we get to see Jesus as he is. And when we see him, then we see us. We see him and we see us. When you don't see Jesus, when you don't get an opportunity to see Jesus as the Lord, as he is, as glorified, as the great I am, when we don't get to see Jesus, when we don't see him, we are not able to experience him. When we are not able to experience him, we are not able to see us. We can only find ourselves when we find Jesus. Why is there so much confusion in the hearts and the minds of different kind of individuals in the world today? Because of losing track of finding Jesus. Well, 
is true that it is God who finds us in whatever capacity we are. So Jesus died while we are still sinners. But we also have a responsibility to choose him. But how can someone choose him if they have not heard or or even read the word of God to know who he is? So the mandate has been given to Paul here as an appointment to go and open the eyes of those who are still blind, blind to seeing Jesus as the light of the world, blind to seeing Jesus as the Savior, as our Redeemer, as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, as the Eroi, blind to seeing Jesus. That blindness is what actually translates to individual blindness. So without seeing Jesus, then we cannot see ourselves. We are going to see ourselves in the wrong way because there are many other voices that are going to be speaking to us, that are going to be telling us what we are not but the author of creation is jesus that is why the book of hebrews says that we have to fix our eyes on jesus who is the author and the perfecter of of the whole creation and if we we fix our eyes on jesus we see him then we can see us because he created us we we are in him but if we are blinded and deceived, misguided to be living otherwise, then that is how we are not able to experience the fullness of who he is. So be my witness. The appointment comes as a mandate. And he says that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, so that they may obtain forgiveness of sins as an inheritance among those who have been consecrated by faith in me. Hallelujah. You see, the essence behind sin produces death. So Jesus came to die, give us forgiveness, so that we can have life, and not just life, but life in the fullness. It is a continuation. It is a continuation tense, you know, because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. So if he is the eternal God, eternal God, it means the minute when we receive his forgiveness, we accept and embrace it and receive it, we are transformed into another new life that has no end, has no end. Because if we see him as an eternal God, then we are not bound anymore by fear of death or Uh, You see, freedom is a state of mind. So if freedom, Jesus sets us free, actually there is a verse that says, for freedom Christ has set us free. So for us to be able to live in that freedom, our mind has to be set free. And this is the freedom that reveals to us that we belong to the eternal God. So if we receive Jesus here today, our lives are secure. Our lives are safe. It doesn't mean that we are not going to encounter struggles and challenges. It only means that he is in charge and in control of everything that comes our way, everything that we go through, every situation. We have to keep believing, keep trusting, keep holding on until the end of time. And what is this desire? What is this relationship that we are cultivating? What is this walk that we are we are dwelling on? We are, we are seeking every day. We are choosing him every day, you know? What is it? We are cultivating this relationship because he said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So we know that Jesus is the eternal God for a reason. He's the Alpha and Omega for a reason. He is still Lord of all. So our lives are not bound by this world. This is just a moment that we are here. But when everything passes away, then we have to be transformed to be with him. So Jesus said when he was leaving his disciples, I am going to prepare a place for you. It means that the resurrection, why Jesus resurrected was to remind us (laughs) that we are meant to also go through this process in life. So while while the joys of this world, while the, the, the short short term you know short term joys of this world has bound many into sin and all kinds of slavery 
The freedom of trusting, believing, receiving, acknowledging, embracing Jesus in our hearts, in our lives, seeking him every day comes to release us from this kind of slavery. So we live in this world, but we are not of this world, the Bible says. So we live in this world, but we are not going to be of this world because the kingdom, like Jesus said that he came to establish, was not just the kingdom that they thought that was, that made them kill him. So (laughs) he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So we have to also embrace and acknowledge that our kingdom is not going to be of this world. So whatever is happening of this world is not going to be... the thing that we have to live in, follow, and just be swallowed in. We have to rise above the kingdom of this world, rise above the systems of this world, rise above anything that does not glorify God. God is the one who created you and I. He's the one who brought us into this world. If we know we belong to him, then we have to choose wisely every day. We have to choose as we journey with him, choose as we seek him, choose as we love him, choose as we worship him, choose as we read the word of God, choose as we meditate on him, choose as to witness him by all capacity in every of our endeavors to witness the goodness of God, to witness the Lordship of Jesus, to choose to choose the right, the right thing to do in accordance with his will. It is to do what uh, once you are taught, you know, while in, in the youth, that to keep asking the Lord, what would you do? WWJD, what would Jesus do about this situation before we embark on any decision? So Paul was appointed after he had an encounter. So we pray that the Lord will help us to be able to embrace this word as it is. And to live it not just today, but from this moment on, religiously. To live it in accordance with his will and for the glory of his name. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving for your word, Lord, we submit and surrender to you. Our every thought, word, and action, our plans, our expectations, our aspirations, we pray for your direction. Your mercy, your grace, your power, and your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for teaching us something new. Help us, Lord Jesus, that through every experience, every situation, every circumstance of our life, that we will choose to be to be your witness. That, Lord, every encounter you have given us, all the moments that you have allowed us to experience you in our lives will not be hidden, but like you have spoken to choose to be the light to choose to be the light so that you your name will be glorified so that the good news will be known so that faith will arise in the hearts of men and women and so that your will may be done so that your will may be done and your children restored we honor you we praise you and we worship you It is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.